I could describe Ruth, I would say pragmatic, artful, humble, hardworking, and delightful. Tolerant, as well as patient and kind and um, passionate about things. She's detail-oriented and artistic. Passionate, adorable, um, visionary, and uh, just delightful. Well, when I think of Ruth, I think of her uh, tremendous determination and uh, how she would become interested in something and then really plummets depths. So there were many groups of plants over the years that uh, she would take an interest in. And when she did, she would get books on them. She would look up uh, what all the different kinds were, where they came from, what their cultural needs were. And she'd make lists of all the ones that were her favorite ones and then uh, seek to find those. And, and sometimes it got a little bit carried away. I think what inspires me about Ruth is this ability to um, always be sort of forward looking in her life. And I would say that maybe that's a result of her spending time in a garden where you do have to plan and think ahead and, and adapt and change. And I think that she's done that with the garden, obviously, but also I think she's a person who doesn't dwell on what isn't and someone who doesn't think about um, what has been or the past. She looks forward, she keeps moving, and I think that there's something really nice about that. I think the most um, representative aspect of her character that's demonstrated in the garden is actually the collection itself, the diversity of the collection. She, she was passionate about learning as much as she could about every plant that she had in her collection and all of its relatives and subspecies and variants, um, geographic variants. And so the garden demonstrates this diversity of plants in a way that most, certainly most private gardens don't, in few public gardens. Uh, you need to go to a, uh, a university level botanical garden to find the diversity that you have here in the size space we have. Because I've always been a collector um, that was one of the things that caused me to uh, bond with Ruth in the beginning is because she's a collector too, not just plants, but seashells and uh, recipes and all sorts of things. And I've always been a collector myself. When I was young, I collected coins and then I moved on to uh, things like posters and fruit crate labels and then plants. And uh, Ruth and I are attracted to really a lot of the same kinds of plants. Uh, but Ruth was able to indulge her plant collecting impulse on a grander scale than me because she had a lot more room to do it in. And uh, just seeing the, the way that she plunged into it and got all these wonderful plants and put them together and uh, created compositions with them was a wonderful inspiration to me. And uh, she continues to be a, a really inspiring person in my life. She was always um interested in art and her patience shows through in the plants that she picked and uh, her willingness to wait for them to grow because she most of the plants she got were either from seed or were in little tiny pots and they were she got them through catalogs and that encouraged her to uh, choose unusual varieties that she might not have otherwise. Also, she is truly um, an intellectual too. And so she, she wanted to find out all about all the plants and join uh, societies and, and got involved with other people and really made the most of it. So, that impresses me. Well, I would say one of my favorite stories involving Ruth, um, you know, Ruth is a meticulous record keeper and really documented her garden and the things that happened in it really well. And 
I remember one time early in my time here, we were standing in um, bed six, which is the long shaded bed with the structure on top. And we discovered there was an area where um, plants had been removed and the soil was prepped um, and readied for new plants to be put in. But before that happened, suddenly a seedling appeared and we watched it flower and it had sort of a little, I think it was a, some sort of little snapdragonish flower, maybe scrofulariaceae or something. But at any rate, Ruth went back to her office and sat down and found the map and found the name of that plant that she had planted actually 25 years earlier. But the seed had been lying dormant in the soil all of those years and because it was disturbed it came to the surface and it sprouted. And just the the fact that it was, you know, um, interesting enough to her that she would go back and look it up and then she could actually find the information. We knew exactly what it was because of her record keeping and I think that just shows her sort of attention to detail and, and still, you know, interest in, in what she was looking at. So when, when Dick Turner brought me in to um, do some graphics for this project when it first got started, I spent a lot of time loitering in the garden. Um, and it meant I kept running into Ruth um, periodically because she was very busy running around, planting this, planting that. And we got to talking occasionally as I was taking photographs and she asked me how everything was going and um, she was very sweet. Um, and one time I happened to notice an Echeveria growing nearby and I said, oh my God, that's really beautiful. What, what is that? And I, I talked to her about it and I said, oh, I just love that. that I've never seen that. She just reached down and grabbed a hunk of it, pulled it out of the ground, and, and gave it to me. <laughs> and, and we still have it. Um, I, we've been growing it all these years since, and it's a, a treasured um, plant in our garden now. So. And you just gave me a piece of it. Oh, and I just gave yes, you a piece right. of it. Exactly, yes. We're going full circle here. <laughs> I have always said that gardeners are the most likely people to live a long life. And I think Ruth is a perfect example of that. She was able to garden here <clears throat> until um, really the late late 90s, uh, her late 90s, and um, that's pretty significant. She was out here in the garden essentially seven days a week from sunrise to sunset, focused on everything that needed to be done. Um, and unlike many people who have uh, uh, some staff helping them. She had two gardeners who worked uh, more or less full-time in this uh, in this public garden and, and in the private garden around her house. Most people with staff like that would have assigned weeding to the staff. Ruth did actually most of the weeding herself because she knew exactly what was the weed and she knew how to get it out of the ground and uh, wanted to make sure that the pathways and the beds were as clean as they could possibly be, and she did that better than anybody else. Still better than anybody can do it today. I remember one time I came out in the garden and Ruth was hard at work weeding in a bed that had agaves in it. And she had obviously gotten a little too close to the agave and uh, there was blood streaming down her forearm. And I said, Ruth, you've been cut. Look at that blood coming out. And she said, oh, if I stopped every time I had a little scratch, I'd never get anything done. And I think that really speaks to the way Ruth is. When she uh, gets to doing something, she absorbs herself in it, and uh, she's not going to be uh, put aside by little distractions like some blood. <laughs> she's tough. She's brave. Fearless. <laughs> I hope for the future that this garden thrives and that people continue to be struck by the beauty of the, of the place that Ruth created and loved so dearly. And I think that, you know, so long as people continue to visit and just open their mind to what they see, I think that the garden will live on because it's, it's su such a special place. And I think that people will continue to be enamored with it and curious by it and fall in love with it.